بعد تحول فيروس الكورونا إلى وباء عالمي مدن بأكملها تتساقط صحيا واقتصاديا والعالم بأسره يشاهد ما يحدث عبر محطات التلفزيون عبر مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي وعدد الإصابات في ارتفاع وفي ظل ما يجري من تغيرات جذرية في المنظومة العالمية معنا الخبيرة العقارية كانديس ريتش اللي رح نستعرض معها ما مدى تأثير هذه الأزمة على القطاع العقاري سلبا أم إيجابا مساء الخير لكل مشاهدينا مشاهدي واتساب ميديا نتورك منرحب فيكم جميعا ومنرحب أكيد بأسئلتكم وتعليقاتكم عبر الفيسبوك لايف Uh, the coronavirus, uh, it's taken its toll on everyone. During this time of uncertainty, many businesses are trying uh, to find non-traditional and creative ways uh, to do their work. So uh, join me uh, today, Crandis uh, Rich from KW, uh, Domain Luxury Home International in Birmingham, Michigan, uh, to discuss the impact of the virus, corona uh, pandemic, on the uh, housing market uh, so from what you have seen so far uh, the government is slashing interest rates and aiming to keep buyers in the market and our situation is still uncertain and the stock market is plummeting so um, from what you have seen so far uh, candace uh, people have questions people are concerned so tell me uh, would you say housing market is headed for a slowdown in the coronavirus economy first and foremost thank you so much for having me it's an honor to be, here to be able to answer these questions um You're welcome. absolutely we've seen we've actually seen a little bit of a downturn obviously um the, the determining factor is whenever we're going to be able to nip this health crisis in the butt. So the, there's still uncertainty right now. So yes, we've seen sure. a downturn. Um, we've, we've seen downturns before, but right now we're still early in the game. I think in the next month, we're gonna really see where we're at with things. Right now it's a little bit too early. Okay. Well, I hope, uh, Candice, at this time of crisis, we all have to make sacrifices to get to get through this, you know. So how is this crisis different from uh, the 2008-2009 crash? Oh, that's a great question. So most of the people today right now um, are comparing it to that. I think that that's where their fears and their mind is going. They're thinking that we're going to end up in the exact same position. And, and they couldn't be completely different from each other. The 2008 crash... Um, was due to poor standards in, in the financial institutions, and it was the subprime mortgage uh, area. Um, housing uh, prices were overinflated, and um, again, there was poor standards in lending, and that's what caused that crash. That was a housing crash. What we're in right now is a health crisis, and unfortunately, um, that falls in natural disaster. So you can see right out of the gate that that's two completely different reasons why we are in a position right now. Now, of course, this health crisis is creating what's called like a ripple effect, a domino effect. We're seeing businesses closing. We're seeing unemployment right now. We're seeing people holding back on making a decision of buying and selling. And panicking. And panicking for of sure. Of course. Of course. And it they're taking their mind back to that 2008 time because that's... Most of the people today, that's they live through that, so that's what they know. Um, some really key important features to compare the two. This is a health crisis from a virus. Yes, because of this virus, we are on a lockdown, so businesses are closing and whatnot. Like I said, the ripple effect. From 2008, a couple things to compare to. We had extremely high interest rates at that time. Now we have historically low interest rates. Um, also during that time, the mortgage standards were extremely loose. I don't know if um, some of your uh, viewership remembers what was called stated income. Basically, you could get a loan and just state your income. You didn't have to show proof of employment. You didn't have to show a W-2. Today, lessons learned, the banks are very strict on lending to people. And so that's curtailing that area. Another thing is it, the inventory during that time in 2008 was extremely high. Right now we're in a shortage. We have a high buyer demand and we have an extremely low inventory. So just looking at those comparisons, our economy has been super strong for the last 10, 12 years. 
during 2008, 2009, when that market crashed, we were already coming out of a very weak economy. So all of that, taking all of that in and comparing the two, you can see that I think that we will recover from this pretty quickly. When there's the uncertainty, until we get, and you're going to hear me keep saying this because I'm not an economist, but until we get mm -hmm, this, mm -hmm. this uh, virus under control, we won't know when that is going to happen. But I know that we will recover. So Candace, uh, with all the incentives and the programs that, that that are being offered by the government, will home prices still go drop dramatically or is there hope it could get back on track like later this year? So I think that, you know, you're going to see, you're going to hear people talk about shifts. So there's going to be a shift in the economy and then there's shifts in real estate. So in this particular um, case, as far as price drops, different cities, and different cities, different locations, and different demographics are going to have a different scenario and a different outcome, meaning lower markets are probably going to get hit um, with a decline more so than the luxury market. Um, where the middle market sits, that's something to really look at. I think that the, the middle market's going to have um, a more stable pricing. And again, lower the lower market values are probably going to get hit more because those people will probably be affected by unemployment. So the, the price decline will be there to either A, be able to accommodate them as buyers or B, the selling activity just won't be as strong because those that type of demographic, the unemployed and, and, and lower market values might not be purchasing at that time. Okay, so... Uh we know the peak home buying and selling season, I mean, for realtors is springtime. And now we got hit by this crisis. Do you think uh, we were going to see like home homes withdrawn from the market? So I actually, and what are the, what are the, the, the expectations? So, I mean, just to give you a little historic traditional, I actually brought some graphics um, just to, just to take a look at okay. them. Um, if, if, Traditionally, Michigan is a seasonal state. You just said that. So um, in the yeah. first quarter, usually is where you'll see 15% of our sales for the whole year. Second quarter, 20%. Third quarter, 35. Fourth quarter, 30. Um, when you look at this and you see it creep back up, um, actually, this is a little bit reversed here. It should be 15% uh, um, for the first quarter, and then you'll see it uh, creep back up to 30%. So because okay. our strongest market is in the spring, and um, we are in the spring months right now, and we're obviously not going to be able to have that big influx of, of inventory come through, you're going to see that pushed probably to late summer, maybe early fall or maybe fall with, yes. with the inception that we're going to have this virus be nipped in the butt. If we can't get it under control by summer, you'll see these, all these figures be pushed to late fall and worst case scenario would be first quarter of 2021. Okay. So that's the objection or the projection for this. True. Uh, and another, uh, thing to, another thing to consider yeah. just, just because we're talking in different seasons here, you know, we have, okay. spring, we have summer, we have fall, we have winter. Um, they are talking about possibly closing the schools permanently for the rest of the year. Now, traditionally yes. people stop shopping for homes are in our, our, as realtors, our slow market is July and August because people usually take their family vacation before school starts. Correct. They want to get their kids yes. settled in school, so they don't even want to bother looking, listing their home or looking for a home. If school closes, you might see a new crop of sellers and buyers during that time if, if, if this health um, um, issue is nipped in the butt. So that, so that, can that might change if they yeah. keep the school, close, you know, the school closings. So, you know, okay. there, there's something to think about. I guess that's a good point uh, that you mentioned already. But do you think, do you believe now that it's a good time to to buy a house? I do. As, since we talked about since we talked about the interest rate now is decreasing, and we're talking about the market is uh, plummeting, all of that. So that's uh, is it going to contribute to that? I mean, I think again, it's not a one size fits all answer, and sure. it is it is to each person's scenario. So we just discussed that. The ripple effect has created some job loss for some people. Some businesses are, are either going to be slow. Um, they're going to not reopen. Some might reopen. Because of that, um, 
each buyer is going to have a different scenario. So I'm working with clients and I'm talking to them and I'm asking them, what is your reason for moving? You know, in an ideal situation, why do you want to move? And if their mm -hmm. answer is, I want a better neighborhood, I want a bigger house, I, I um, would like my children to go to a different school. So then I'm going to ask them, well, why is that changed now? Now, their answer could be, well, it's changed because my husband lost his job. Or it could be, well, we just don't know. We thought maybe we should wait. We thought maybe that if we just wait, we'll get a better deal. So no, not necessarily is it a bad time to buy or a great time to buy. It's going to be based on that individual client's answer, that buyer's answer. So um, I actually think it's a great time to buy. Um, even though the inventory is low, um, the interest rates are great right now. I think um, it's a way better investment than putting your money into the stock market, especially if you're going to treat this home purchase as a long-term investment. So a, a lot of people, I think, are taking the, what do you call it, wait and see uh, approach. Right? Absolutely. Yep. And, and, and do you think if it's a good time to buy now, do you think the seller will be more flexible to negotiate the price? Well, in every real estate tra transaction, it's negotiable. Yeah. I mean, that yes, but maybe more now. Thing. So <laughs> I know that people probably have this that, that this idea that oh, we're going to get a great deal, or we're going, but sellers are going to give their home. I, I would, I would think so. I of course, know. of course. So I mean, I think that um, sellers that are going to be on the market right now are going to be very serious sellers, and I, I, I'm assuming that the agent that they're working with is going to price the home to sell. So I don't think. Homes are going to, the prices are going to be inflated. So looking for that deal that you're talking about, I really don't believe you're going to see. We have a graph. Uh, yeah, we have a graph. Uh, I have a graph and, 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 and that's something that's coming up after. But um, I'm okay. a little bit yeah. too quick. But just, 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 just to finish that answer, I think that like if you had your home uh, home for, on the market for sale and you say, Candace, I, I don't care about, you know, what's going on right now. I need to sell and I want to put my home on the market because there are buyers out there and I want this to move. Well, of course, you're going to price it to move. You're going to price it at market value at market value and you're going to price it to sell. You're not going to have a, a, an aggressive price point like you would if it was a traditional spring market. So, you know, mm -hmm. are there deals? I think it's going to be. Price That's what we want to know. Are there deals? I think that I, I think in different in a different situation. I think for investors, there's, there there are going to be deals. But I think well, if there is if there is a deal, let me know. Okay. I don't think people are going to increase their 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 selling price and give their homes away. No. Okay, let's talk about the the, the seller. Okay, what do you say to sellers that already have their home on the market, or those maybe considering their home uh, or selling their home? So should we wait to list our home? Should we pull our home from the market and put back? Back on later. Uh, what do you think, uh, Candace? I mean, again, it's a personal scenario, but I can't stress enough. The, we came into this spring market from the winter with an extremely mm -hmm. high buyer demand. That buyer demand hasn't gone away. Um, we've had decisions maybe that have been put on hold because of the of, of this health crisis, but the inventory is so extremely low right now. Putting your home on the market right now and trusting your agent can market it still and get it sold is a great thing. You're going to have less competition. Um, if you mm -hmm. wait, you're going to have an influx of other sellers competing for that same buyer that you're trying to capture. So I think it's a great okay. thing list right now. Okay. Well, let's talk about the, the positive uh, side as well. You know, uh, now that everyone is at home after being quarantined for months, they might realize like their home is too small. Uh, they, it needs to be updated. That's a good thing, right? I mean, to, uh, to consider. Absolutely. I think that that is also going to create a new set of buyers. I think that people are, right. who are quarantined right now are either going to think it's too small, like you said. They're going to think that, hey, you know what? Instead of spending remodeling, why don't we go find a home that's more turnkey, something that's already been remodeled? Or you might see people that are living in larger homes where, where their children have moved out of the house and they're ready. they might be more inclined to become empty nesters and downsize sooner now than later. So I think, um, you know, it's just been a very uh, humbling experience being quarantined. You might see <laughs> Um, people upsizing because of, of um, 
new uh, babies in their life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, you might sure. see, or you might see a new crop of uh, buyers uh, having needing two homes because of uh, they couldn't stand each you other. Think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have a... You got on each other's nerves, so they're moving out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, we, we're going to have to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the process of selling and buying uh, homes in, uh, in this crisis, I guess. Okay? Okay. We'll be right back. Thanks. And we are back. Uh, I'm still with uh, Candice Fritch from KW Domain International, well, Luxury Homes International in Birmingham, Michigan. And we're discussing the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the, uh, the housing market. So, Candice, are you still with me? I am. <laughs> Okay, so uh, in times of social distancing and shelter in place order, how is the process in uh, buying and selling uh, in times like these? Are realtors trying to find like more innovative ways to make the sale? So, well, one of the challenges, well, right now, before we were in the shelter in place as realtors, we were allowed to go in the home, work with our photographers and videographers to begin to market the home, hold open houses, hold broker tours, and do showings in person. Right. Now that we have the shelter in place um, uh, order, uh, we as realtors didn't make what is deemed the essentialist. Essential workers, you know, were obviously the healthcare, some of the financial institutions and, and you know, government workers and such. So um, we as realtors didn't make that 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 list. So it changed right. the way we are doing things dramatically. So Definitely, would be, yes. It would be a challenge that we faced as realtors. Um, so we had to get creative. We had to get creative. We had to tap into uh, technology, doing things like what you and I are doing, you know, as a prime example. I wasn't allowed to meet you at your studio to uh, yeah. do this wonderful interview. We're doing And this is the first time I'm doing this. I mean, so like, you're, you're getting to for the last month now with clients we're setting up remote calls and we're doing um, remote showings this way we're doing video tours this way so um you know it's 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 been amazing so you know it's been a challenge obviously for all parties involved seller buyer both agents but um this is what you know we we've been doing and then i can walk you through so some sure uh so uh candace uh, so no more open houses and now you're tapping into technology uh, to do, you know, to do your work, right? So how is that? How is that going with the virtual tour? Because I know a, a lot of clients, like for myself, I like to see the house in person in order for me to be convinced. What do you say to these people like me? Okay, so well, like actually, um, just to get just just to get the home listed per se. Let's let's say we're listing your home and you're not. You're not the buyer right. right now, so so um, well, we can even talk about buying. So you know, let's 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 start with the buying. So as a okay. buyer, you come to me and you say, Candace, um, 
I'd like to start looking at these properties. So regardless of being remote right now, we always set our clients up on their own personal portal to begin searching for homes. So that's been done online for as long as I know. Um, so they oh, regardless, collecting okay. their homes online um, through the MLS and corresponding with us and saying, you know, I'd like to see this house. I'd like to see that house. Could you research this house further? So we're still able to do that. Next step further would be, hey, I'd like to see the house. So herein lies the, the, the change. Traditionally, we would, you know, meet them at the home and take a tour, you know, in person. Now what we're doing is we're asking the, the list agent to contact their seller the seller is on a remote call like you, like you and I are right now. And they're basically taking their cell phone or their tablet and they're walking through the home and they're um, doing a video and we're all watching. Okay. Like right now I can see the back of your home. If you stood up and said, Hey, here's my kitchen. You know, actually it would be the agent guiding, guiding and directing the right. message. Okay. You would just walk slowly through your home and, the buyer and, and and the seller and both agents are on the phone and we're doing a showing remotely. Sure. So it's been so, successful. Uh, I mean, it you know, it's definitely has its has its uh, pros. I'm sure it's a little bit challenging. I mean, it's not really ideal, as you said, but it, it, it works. Obviously. It works. And we've actually been okay. successful in handling sales that way. Okay. What about the rest of the professionals in your industry? Uh, how have they been limited? So, so we're talking about like inspection, the mortgage, doing paperwork, you know, guide us through the, the whole process. So, um, again, going back to what the governor our, our state governor deemed essential, which is pretty close to what's happening on in all the other states as well. But a real estate agent, like I said, did not make the cut for being deemed essential. Photographers didn't either anymore. So any any. Um, um, photography that needs to be done, we're going to rely on on the actual um, homeowner. Uh, and, and then we have ways to enhance photos. So so that's not been the problem. Um, lenders are allowed to still lend. Uh, and, and obviously, they can handle things remotely and electronically. So you're able yeah. to still get your loan and get pre-approved and follow through with the loan lending process. Um, underwriters are accepting appraisals from uh, appraisers are now allowed to enter into the home. Prior to that, they were accepting desktop appraisers. Um, just recently, inspectors are now allowed to enter the home. Um, they can? They can enter the home and do the inspection that just got lifted either yesterday or the day before. Um, so prior to that, we were doing an extension for time to do that due diligence. But now they are now yeah. able to. The homeowners have to leave the home. And obviously you have to get, you know, everyone has to agree to it. But they did deem them essential. Um, movers are allowed to enter the home. You are allowed to move from point A to point B. Um, old home to new home. Um, obviously, everyone taking extreme measures with um, security for, you know, health, covering shoe covers, gloves, masks, um, sanitizing, everything. So um, basically, if you look at the chart, if you want to pull that up again, um, that okay. kind of gives you an idea of the course of events from I selected a home, I saw a home, I'd like to write an offer, we're going to negotiate. Um, and now the offer is accepted. You are um, allowed to, with the laws of title and notarizing, you must be present at closing. The real estate agent is not allowed to be there with you. Just you and your title rep will be present at closing. The buyer and his title rep will be at a separate office and they will be conducting their closing that way. Um, basically, Majority of the people involved in the transaction are allowed to be present. Some of them are, okay. but you know, you will still have a seamless and smooth transaction. As far as wiring funds, people have been wiring funds all the time. You're now Forever, able to yes. wire your earnest money deposit and you'll wire your, your closing um, money to the seller at the end. So, you know, it's so very streamlined. So obviously you're trying uh, your best uh, to take the maximum measures, uh, you know, to protect your, uh, your cl clients, obviously. Always, always. And, you know, again, it has to be agreed upon. I mean, 
you know, if the seller absolutely does not want people in their home to allow the buyer to do their inspection, you know, we can, we, we can, we can set up an addendum for an extension, you know, until this is lifted, but you know, I'm, we'd leave it up to uh, the agreement between both parties. And uh, what are the other challenges uh, that you are facing so far, you know, in the industry? I mean, I think just in general, it, you know, it's been that. Um, I don't think that um, from, from, a, uh, from a challenging standpoint, I think that we just had to kind of think outside the box, you know, to be able to sure, service sure. our clients top match. Um, the, the thing is, this technology has always been there and we've used it. But I think that we're just kind of forced to use more of it in a more concentrated way. I mean, because obviously we do remote calls. This is a brand new. Um, yes. We do uh, videos and, 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 and online tours. Uh, many of us have uh, video tours um, along on our listing already up online. But, you know, traditional ways of looking at a, at a home have been removed temporarily. So that, yeah, that I think uh, I think uh, every business now is trying uh, you know, to do that. So I just want to touch base with you on the luxury market. And since you are an expert on that, uh, um, from your understanding and from what you have seen so far, uh, are you are we seeing some slowdowns and cancellations of high end markets? I mean, not so much cancellation. I think that the luxury market will sustain itself. Um, pretty much the consumer in the luxury market makes up about one to 2% of the population to begin with. And um, they're more than likely to probably be financially secure at this time and to have reserves to get them through this period. So I don't, I don't believe you're going to see too much of a pullback in that market. I okay. think anybody that's in that market will still be in that market. Um, however, um, I think that luxury builders for new builds are probably going to pull back a little bit on increasing their inventory. I think they're going to concentrate on yes. some what they already have in existing inventory. I also have read that there's probably going to be a slight shortage in those materials. So that's going to probably slow up the production on luxury new builds. But the consumer itself, I think, is going to be pretty safe. They might be a little bit more guarded. They might be a little bit more reserved. Um, but financially i think that they're gonna they're, they're gonna weather this storm uh you know before uh, i ask my next question i don't know if do you see any questions on on the board i can't see anything here do you have any questions that you might want to answer our viewers do you see anything uh it's candace exactly for houses so we if you like to answer some some of the questions um, unless they're the same questions <laughs> I don't see I don't see any questions that can oh I have to hit the live. I'm on private. <laughs> yes. 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 I, and I can't do that here. Okay, let's see. Well, no, I see a question I think we already answered. Well, prices decrease dramatically for houses. So again, you know, that's a twofold answer. Um uh it depends on what area, what city. Um, we answered that early on. Um, certain the lower market cities, uh, uh, lower market value cities, you'll probably see a price adjustment because of unemployment being high and the affordability, you know, being tough for them. I think in the luxury market, you're, we just said that you're not going to see a dramatic uh, price uh, decline. You might see um, prices stay stable in the luxury market, but you might see the movement decline, maybe. Okay. Um, Middle market's the area that you need to watch right now. And what I think that we're going to see is people that were considering moving up from the lower market to the middle market might kick back. And people in the luxury okay. market that were right at the cusp, maybe just now getting into the luxury market, which usually sits normally at a million plus. So okay. if you're at the very beginning stages of just getting into the in, into that that luxury are market. we still in that and the you unknown then go back down to the middle market in that sweet spot of six to eight hundred so the middle market really to me is the one to watch that's going to be the most solid you're going to see the fluctuation not in pricing so much in luxury movement but pricing in in, in the in the lower markets so do you think the real estate will rebound quickly or it might take some time so I think that it, I think because we're coming from a, a strong economy that it is going to rebound quickly as far as uh, adjusting. It's going to level off. I mean, you're going to see, like I said earlier, we're going to uh, we were talking about um, 
spring is a, as a hot market, you're going to just see that market shift to a different quarter. So it will okay. rebound. I have a question here. So are the banks still doing refinancing? Now's a great time to refinance. The interest rates are low. Many, many um, people are refinancing at this time. I'm not a, I'm not a mortgage uh, uh, broker. I, I'm not a lender, but um, I'm, I'm actually working with my clients um, who are not ready to move, um, asking me those questions. And it's a great time to refinance. Um, it's a great time to buy for the same reason to, you know, lock those interest rates in. Um, so another question, since evictions stopped, would foreclosures stop too? Great question. So um, we didn't really get to touch on this. Um, with the, yes, we didn't. Uh, there's, there's, there's three things that have been put out in the government right now. And um, we have the $2 trillion um, stimulus package. Um, and in that package, we have, um, um, SBA loans. SBA loans are going to be um, put out for the small business owner. And we also have something that's called um, a payroll protection program, which is going to allow for people to have um, a loan against their payroll to, to help keep their businesses um, open. And then to go back about the, the for, to help stop foreclosures. Right now, what I'm encouraging clients of mine who are temporarily unemployed or indefinitely unemployed because of the situation is to utilize what's called the mortgage forbearance program that lenders are, are, are using. I actually um, uh, called myself to get some information because I, I'm technically, you know, not um, working at full capacity. So I wanted to see what was available for me. So I, I spoke to the lender and they said for up to three months, you can defer your payment at the end of yeah, I heard months, that. It's yeah. a mortgage forbearance. At the end of three months, they will look at your situation again. They will either A, extend that, or B, you can lump sum. And again, it's defer the payment. It doesn't mean you don't get to not pay it. But, you but at least there, that's an option. Yeah, that's because a, this, this way, if yeah. you don't have money coming in, you can preserve the income that you have sitting in the bank. So I think it's a great, it's a great program. Um, one of the things that I applaud the government on is that, and again, it's different from 2008, is that they did it immediately. Within weeks of this crisis hitting, we had a stimulus package. We had the SBA loans. We had, um, we had foreclosures being stopped. We had landlords extending evictions. A lot of things. We had a lot of things. being um, deferred. We've had lots of programs happen within two, two weeks of this. And so again, all the more, I think that we're going to recover quickly because of these programs being put in place. I really commend that. You know, in the in the former crisis, we didn't have that. It took sometimes a couple of years before anybody saw any help. Sure. So, Candice, what is the lesson learned at the end of the day? So, I mean, I think that all of us are grateful as as realtors that we are. Um, blessed to be able to have technology at our fingertips today to be able to give Absolutely. our clients still top-notch service. We're here for them. Uh, we've been in constant contact with them. Um, the lessons learned as far as um, the situation, we're a victim of circumstance. How could anybody ever imagine that we would be going through a health crisis like this? I mean, it's nobody, scary. nobody, I mean, nobody could do that. Yeah. I think that, you know, the lessons learned would be to ask the government, maybe not, you know, to be better, well prepared, like for the equipment needed for the hospitals and such. But I think they did a phenomenal job from the financial standpoint. Absolutely. You know, and then just, um, something I'd like to say that I'm so grateful for is, um, my, my agency, I, Keller, uh, KW Domain in Birmingham, along with the Keller Williams brand, right out of the gate, poured education, technology, support. Every day I can tune in to how to handle a situation, how to do this, how to service your client, how to do what we're doing, how to set up yes. a FaceTime call with your client, how to sh uh, guide your client uh, on how to do a video shoot of their home. I mean, instantaneously just poured knowledge into us so that we could service our clients. And, and it's just been profound. It's It's been great. I, I'm blessed to be in this company. It's been great. That's that's great to hear. I want to thank you so much, uh, Candice, for all those valu valuable information. I hope it was helpful. Uh, 
Uh, thank you. Thank you. That was Candace from KW Domain the Luxury Homes International in Birmingham, Michigan. I'd like to thank our viewers. Thank you for watching and please stay home, uh, stay safe and good night. بتشكر كل مشاهدينا ومنتمنى لكم امسيه سعيده دمتم دائما بخير والى اللقاء. Thanks for